got an email this week actually from Beth Arnurius a couple days ago asking, was I aware of what was taking place in France right now? Actually, it has begun. Was I aware of what was taking place in France? Um, and I said no. Uh, as I was reading it, I said no. And she let me know that actually today it was planned uh, and would because of how many hours they're ahead of us um, that there are 70 nations, at least that was what the intention was, there are 70 nations that are gathering to determine uh, partitioning the land of Israel uh, and make it two states, make it uh, Israel and make it a Palestinian state. Um, in the article that I read that is being circulated by the Elijah List, um, there is also some uh, awareness that in all likelihood there could be a meeting at the UN on Tuesday regarding this matter. These are very serious times, as well as this week is such an incredible week for our nation in terms of uh, the inauguration of our new president. And uh, it may have happened before, but it just seems to me it's unprecedented. The, um, the protests, the magnitude of them, the declarations of what's intended to take place, um, the scheming, it's just unbelievable to me. Um, I brought a bell this morning. I, I probably won't be able to see it, but did anybody else bring a bell? If you could lift it high or somebody in the back could tell me, did anybody else bring a bell? Pardon? I'm the only one. No. The article coming out of the Elijah list of several respected people in the United States, that at least I am aware of them, uh, have asked the people around the world to ring a bell uh, in, in keeping with making declarations, prayer requests of God, specifically in reference to what's going on in France at this point in time. I think that was a good idea. I, um, the PowerPoint that's called Ring the Bell or something like that. Um, I know I've had you do several things, Timothy, and if you'll extend 400% grace to Timothy this morning because of many adjustments I've made on the fly, and he and the video booth, sound booth, um, are trying to adapt. I'm pushing the little square, Timothy, on the bottom of my screen, um, but, it's, but I don't see it. And what I'm going to do is, and there was a, a resolution or declarations that were found in this Elijah list. And someone may ask, why am I doing this? Because this appears to be a pivotal time in the earth. And I believe among things, God's called us to be a house of prayer. And so my intention is to lead us in praying for two things, our nation and Israel. And uh, I think it's every church's responsibility to pray for our country and especially in such a tumultuous time like this. And I would hope every church that names the name of Jesus Christ would have Israel in its sights and would pray that God's purposes for Israel would be fulfilled and every um, intention and planning and scheming of man to disrupt God's intentions and the things that he has said in his word about Israel. It is my hope that every church that names the name of Jesus, thank you. Did this just happen on its own? Thank you. So what I want to do, uh, there was a resolution that was put forth. I made some adjustments to that resolution, so what is going to happen is I'm going to go through it, I'm going to read it. I'm not asking you to say it or make this declaration at this point in time. It is how I intend to end. Uh, partly because maybe some of you, maybe many of you, maybe a few of you have read the resolution. I just think... Um, uh, I have made some adjustments, so I want you to see what I'm going to uh, encourage you to join with me as a corporate entity in the United States calling for God to protect the land of Israel, essentially from the schemes of men, and especially in immediate focus what's going on in France right now and what its intentions are. I have not said this publicly, I don't think, I have said it privately. 
in the election that's just taken place in the United States, I equate it to an encounter that Joshua had when he was standing outside of Jericho, not right next to it, but he was ready to lead the nation of Israel, and a heaven, I'm convinced a heavenly being presented himself. And uh, I think from the context of the scripture and what Joshua said, uh, this heavenly being obviously looked like a warrior and had a drawn, drawn sword. And he asked, whose side are you on? Are you on our side or the enemy? And the being, who was captain of the host, said he was on the Lord's side. Now the Lord's purposes for the conquest of Israel were so much greater than just winning that battle at Jericho. There were so many things that God was doing. So many things. That to Joshua and to the children of Israel... That was totally, which it should have, filling their sight to do what God said, to approach what was before them. That's what they should have been doing. But what God was doing was so much bigger. So I believe the answer that that being, I think it was one of the, the, the captain of the host of the Lord, was saying, I'm doing the Lord's biddings. Don't look at it as... I'm helping you accomplish your purposes. I'm helping your enemies accomplish their purposes. I am here to help the Lord accomplish his purposes. That's why I've been sent. And I believe those walls fell down, not because they walked around in silence. It's because they were doing the Lord's purposes. I believe God has called us, among many things, to be a house of prayer in very specific ways. And I believe he's called us to be a house of prayer, to pray about whatever he gives us to pray about. But among them, I believe, are our nation and Israel, are two very specific prayer targets that I believe God has specifically given to this congregation. But at the end of the service, which won't be far, at the end of the service, I hope to have you pray and declare this with me. So this is a call for global ringing of bells for peace. Peace, God's peace, God's almighty. This comes from the Elijah list, but for the last time I have modified it. So, uh, these are the things um, that I would guide you to say corporately. As we ring our bells, maybe as I ring my bell, as we ring our bells, we want to join and agree together for the sake of an undivided nation of Israel. Supposedly, all over the earth, in the time zones, each time zone, that people who are influenced by the Elijah list will be doing this. In essence, an unending chorus for the next 24 hours of people who are saying by ringing a bell that uh, there is a bell that the UN has outside of the UN uh, buildings called the Peace Bell. It actually was made by Japan Japanese and in the 1950s was presented to the United Nations by the Japanese. Uh, there were coins that were used to be melted down to make this bell. It is housed in a uh, religious structure outside, and the base, the stones that the thing sits on, it's reported that they are stones that were donated by Israel. It's a very interesting um, combination. That bell is rung twice a year on, on Earth Day, which is a celebration of, of causes that deal with our environment, and there's another time. Uh, the suggestion was to ring the bell in concert with the UN's peace bell, which is intended to call for peace in the earth. I have chosen not to reference the UN peace bell. As we ring our bells, we want to join and agree together for the sake of an undivided nation of Israel. We decree your glory, your freedom, and your unity by the Holy Spirit of God under Almighty God for each national leader and fellow citizen to come into alignment with Almighty God's purposes for Israel. That's the focus. Peace on earth and for the nations of the earth to come into agreement with God's purposes are for the nation of Israel. We further declare good news to be over every land as we honor the creator of our individual lands, may his peace prevail. And this is our prayer and declaration together with one voice. 
intending for it to be a global voice and that all over the world people are calling for God to protect the land of Israel from this um, strategy that is sought to be implemented right now in our history. We are agreeing with the ringing of bells for peace, the peace of Almighty God to be on and among all of the nations. I can do that. I can urge you to do that. To add our declarations as God's people seeking to be in agreement with him and his purposes for the land of Israel. That is the major intention is uh, this attempt, seeming attempt to come up with the division of the land of Israel. God help them, God help us. When this election took place and I began to hear uh, on the night of the election and I did stay up until oh, three or four in the morning, I began, when I heard, where did this come from? Nobody guessed this. Nobody saw this coming. I didn't immediately think, oh good, God was for Trump and he was against Hillary Clinton. I don't believe that. I believe both of them have done enough in their lives that we know about, don't know about, that if you're looking for someone to be disqualified, they both have earned disqualifications, as I think all of us have earned to be disqualified from significant things God's called us to do if we look at our own behavior and our actions and all the things we have done. I surely believe that to be true of um, President-elect Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton who ran for office. I believed instantly when you have something in your own life, I hope you pay attention to this, in your own life, when something occurs that there is no rational explanation for, there is absolutely no reason for that to have happened. It's just, where did this come from and how did it take place? And everything was stacked against it, so to speak. My suggestion is you start with God. My opinion is that God intervened. Because of Trump, no. Because of Hillary, no. I believe God's purposes were way greater than Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton. I believe God's intentions are his plan for the earth. You certainly can keep your eyes on Israel, I believe, the whole time. You certainly can keep your eyes on the church because I'm among those who believes that there is going to come a final gathering of the full crop of wheat from the parable of the wheat and the tares that that has yet to come. It may be in its beginning stages right now, but that is yet to come. What I believe way more than God uh, showing his approval of Donald Trump or his disapproval of Hillary Clinton, I believe that he has taken a move in the United States that would have the inheritance promised to his son and the land of Israel as far more central focus than either of those two politicians or businessmen who ran for uh, political office than supporting them or saying, they're my choice. I believe it's far bigger. What God is doing, I believe, is choosing for his eternal purposes. So to that end, I can easily pray, your kingdom come, your will be done. When did this happen? God in his wisdom kept telling the nation of Israel every year. He had them retell again and again and again and again the fathers, the nation, celebrate, tell the stories of what God did and how God led them. Why is it that I say that God has specifically given us a prayer assignment in being a house of prayer to both <clears throat> this nation and to the land of Israel? That's the Lord calling, saying, pay attention. If you could do me a favor and turn to Isaiah chapter 56, verse 6. Isaiah 56, 6. twice at the very beginning of Jesus' ministry <clears throat> and at the end of his ministry, in the early days of his ministry, 
of his ministering. <coughs> and in the last time period, maybe the last week, maybe the last two weeks <coughs> of his life before he went to the cross, Jesus cleansed the temple. As he cleansed the temple, he said on both occasions different variants of the same message. You have made it other things, <clears throat> but my father's house is to be a house of prayer. You've made it a den of thieves. You've made it a house of merchandise, but it is to be fundamentally a house of prayer. <clears throat> I'll have to go back to the time when, so I want to read verse 6 and 7. Speaking of those who would come to uh, the Lord's house, also the sons of the foreigner, <clears throat> those would be Gentiles, who join themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord to be his servants. Everyone who keeps from defiling the Sabbath and holds fast my covenant, even them I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. This is the one place in the Old Testament where <clears throat> this is referenced that the Father's house was going to be a house of prayer. I'm among those who believe this is what Jesus was quoting. There isn't another. This is what Jesus was quoting in both instances. You shall make my father's house a house of prayer. Interesting, he was referring to in direct context of those who, in verses before it, uh, because some of the regulations, those who couldn't participate. And in verse 6, went to the foreigners, or those were the Gentiles. <clears throat> for most of us in the room, I'm assuming that would be us. That they were welcome invited to his house, his house of prayer. It was during the election of a number of years ago when John McCain was running against Barack Obama and it would have been Bar Barack Obama's first time of serving as President of the United States. There was a photograph that appeared on the web. <clears throat> I don't know that this was the original photograph, but this is what it looked like, showing John McCain, who was running against Barack Obama. And at the top of it, the message, the sign, what was put on that photograph, the 56th president election. It wasn't the 56th president because we've had presidents who served more than two terms. So the number of presidents we have is less than this. But this was the 56th election. That meant nothing to me other than it was the 56th election. That's all it meant to me. Wow, that's interesting. This is the 56th time we've done this. This was years ago, <clears throat> eight, eight ish years, eight, nine years ago when this appeared. It wouldn't have meant much to me, except on that day, on that Sunday, it was the Sunday actually before the election took place on a Tuesday, the Sunday before the Sunday, just preceding the Tuesday. I brought this message, I use this just as an illustration or to highlight this is what we're facing as a nation, we need to pray about this. And um, somebody in the congregation, a Gary Beaton, came up to me afterwards and said, what do you know about the number 56? I said, I don't know anything. Why did you, in essence, put that up there? I just searched the internet and I found this and that was interesting to me. I called nine prayer meetings, three on the next Sunday, three on the Monday that followed that three on the Tuesday of the election. They were called meetings. We were going to pray for an hour in the spirit. We were going to pray for the, so on Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, Sunday night. On the Sunday morning prayer meeting, which we had been having, oh, I don't know, 10, sometimes 15 people on Sunday morning prayer meetings. Um, during the midst of the prayer meeting, I had a first individual, James Anderson, come up to me and say, there's 56 people in the room. <clears throat> and I said to him, in great faith, no, there's not. Uh, you need to count again. So he did. He came back to me. Pastor, there's 56 people in the room. Uh, I, in a great statement of faith, said, no, there's not 56 people here. Uh, so somebody else came to me. I don't know if James went to them. He won't believe me, so I don't know. He went to somebody else, and they came to me and said, yeah, there's 56 people in the room. I am among those. I don't think everybody would have made this jump 
or connected these dots together, but I'm among those who connected the dots. God was leading us, if nothing else, to pray for this, president, this 56th presidential election. At least at a minimum in this one service. We had nine scheduled, there were eight more to go. I will never forget that. When you have in your life things that catch your heart, then I urge you to follow them. Be attentive. So there were nine meetings. During those three days, uh, I spent a lot of time. That certainly caught my attention. I spent a lot of time looking up the number 56 and found that it's only in the Bible four times. And it's found as numbers. Three of them are in Ezra chapter 2. And the only place in the Bible where the number 56 stands alone, and if you want to understand the meaning of numbers, it is my opinion you start with the Bible. How is it used in Scripture? And many times numbers are used in a variety of ways, so it gives you an indication of how God uses numbers. And 56 in its only uh, instance in Scripture where it's a standalone um, a number in a verse is in Ezra 2. And it says there were 56 men from a certain town that returned for the rebuilding of the temple. And the other three instances, two more of them are found in Ezra chapter 2 and they're combined numbers. And there's one in Chronicles that is a combined number, meaning like 956 or 1256. That's what I mean by a combined number. All four references have to do with individuals, a number of individuals who went back to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple. So I came to the conclusion, the only way the number 56 is used in scripture doesn't mean it's the only way God will ever use it, but that's a good starting place. The only way it is used is in reference to people returning to rebuild the temple. Um, so I thought what came to my attention during that time period was also a very key uh, moment that where God confirmed some thoughts that I had and had someone who I had never met and knew nothing about me and I knew nothing about this person give a prophecy to me that among the words of that prophecy was the house of prayer that there would be a building built and it would be a house of prayer for all nations. And I thought about that at that time period. God, what are you saying? And in thinking about that decided, I wonder where in the Bible I didn't know. At that time period, I didn't know. Well, where is it found in Scripture that Jesus was quoting from when he quoted, when he cleansed the temple at the beginning of his ministry and at the end? It's kind of like, they're the ends of the book. It's not the very first thing he did. It wasn't the very last thing he did. But it sure found, was early in it, and it was late in it. It was in the very beginning days. It was in the very ending days that he cleansed the temple and said, my father's house is to be a house of prayer. You've made it many other things. It's to be a house of prayer. I wonder where it is. I didn't know where it was. Turns out, as we've read it, turns out it's in Isaiah 56. I thought, well, of all the passages, I wonder how many books in the Bible have 56 chapters. I mean, boy, that's, that's an incredible linkage. How many chapters have, how many books have 56 chapters? Actually, there's only one. It's the book of Isaiah. It could be pointed out, well, there's 150 Psalms. That's true. Each one is a book unto itself. It's a collection of them. But still, there's a 56th Psalm. So you could say there's two. There's Psalms. There's the book of Isaiah. But it's fascinating to me that in the passage, in the book, where the declaration is made, 
my father's house shall be a house of prayer, that it would be in Isaiah 56. Now, the way I interpret that is, if anybody's paying attention, we should. How many people in the earth do I think God was including in that? I don't know. But if anybody pays attention, we should. Why do I think we have an unusual assemblage of people, of many in this room, really are impassioned to pray for Israel? And through the years, they're very impassioned to pray for Israel. Why is that? It's not because we have this sign up here on today. I believe it's because God has brought a gathering of people. That that's very important to them. I believe that's the reason. Did God confirm, as far as I'm concerned, this congregation, that for whatever reason known to him, we have a particular linking to his purposes regarding Israel? The answer is yes. We've made three trips to the Temple Mount in Israel. Could you please, were you able to find Ezekiel 40, chapter 40, verse 1? Just tell me, were you able to find it in the New Living Translation? Pardon? We were in Israel. The first time we went, we took a team of 30-some people. We went specifically to go to the Temple Mount. That was our main agenda. And we went to pray on the corners. The Temple Mount consists of a... It's about 33 acres. It's a big area. And it's a rectangle, kind of, of a rectangle. And so it has four corners. And then there's a platform, a big one. There's a platform in the middle of that rectangle that also has four corners. It's quite a big platform on which there are a number of things. And our intentions were to go and pray on each of the eight corners and to pray in the Spirit and say, God, your purposes. We don't even know what your purposes are, uh, but we just know this is a real important spot in the earth, and we've just gathered to pray in the Spirit and to join others and to anoint it and to drive stakes and do all kinds of things during the time period we were there, just saying, your kingdom come, your will be done. What you want to do, do it. And we want to be among those in the earth that we are coming into alignment with that and we are agreeing with that. So we did it. During that year when we had that trip, one of the first things that we encountered was a man who wanted to be, or we found out he was in Israel and he offered to give us about 45 minutes of his time. And he led us up on the Temple Mount the very first time we went. And he talked about some things that I'd really never been exposed to before. And those were all involving the Mount of Olives and the red, a red heifer and a red heifer. Uh, the mikvah altar, altar site, and what that had to do with the temple and future temple and alignments and all those things. And we decided, I decided, we decided we'd make a second trip because we learned things we didn't know about. So we made the next year a second trip. That was 12 people on that trip. We did a lot of study uh, out of Ezekiel 40, 40, 41, 42, which was the temple that Ezekiel describes and decided, well, we don't want to be the world's experts on Ezekiel's temple, but we're going to go to the Temple Mount, and we're going to pray, and we're going to try and align ourselves in a lineup that looks like uh, the dimensions, at least one aspect of the dimensions of that, of that building that's yet to be built. At least I'm among those who think it's yet to be built. The point is, did God confirm in some stunning ways our involvement as a nation, as a congregation, for us a congregation, in what he's doing in America and what he's doing in Israel. <clears throat> While we were there at the exact same time, uh, though it was in the middle of the night, there were people here in the congregation. One of them had a New Living Translation. The day that we were there happened to be April 28th. Through a long series of events, none of them we did. On April 28th of that year, there were 12 from this congregation that were standing in relative formation of the, uh, of the general boundaries of Ezekiel's temple, just 
picking a dimension, what would a royal cubit be? And there was somebody back here, actually a Paul Bradbury, and that year he was using a New Living Translation, uh, and he said they don't have Bibles where they are right now, which on the Temple Mount they're illegal. And he said, let me open and read out of Ezekiel chapter 40. I think it's the first time he had done that. Um, and as he read, I think it's up there on the wall, this is out of the New Living Translation, and it should say, um, in the 25th year of our exile, at the beginning of the year, on the 10th day of the month, in the 14th year, this is not the one, this is New Living Translation. The translation that he read from is they actually, pardon? It is on the screen. On, uh, so this is, so on, he read this. I'm understanding he was in the back of the room. On April 28th, during the 25th year of our captivity, 14 years after the fall of Jerusalem, the Lord took hold of me and took him uh, to Jerusalem, took him onto a hill overlooking the Temple Mount, and he saw the temple, he saw all this. And I thought, okay, we were there. We were standing in formation people from this congregation. We were standing in for, with one couple that was not a part of this congregation. We were standing there in formation, meaning the corners. And it was April 28th. And we had no idea. And we were in Jerusalem. We could have been in any nation of the earth on that day. We could have been in any city. We could have been in any place in Israel. We could have been in any place in Jerusalem. We happened to be on the Temple Mount. And um, I was rooming with a Rusty Ortner. And Paul called Rusty or texted him and t read him this passage. I, it took me three days almost before I could really speak about it. I'd never heard of such a confirmation. What I think the confirmation is that God has called us to pray. Can we go back to the thing I first showed, the ringing of the bell? A call for the global ringing of bells for peace coming from. I went. In the, on the Elijah list, it said if you don't have a bell to do like a utensil on the side of a glass. And so I went in the kitchen and I got knives. And if you clink them together, they sound like bells. So I wondered if it would be all right if we passed them out. So when you rang your bell, we would each have a bell also. Um, I read, I read that. I didn't read about the knives. I read about well, clanging a plastic glass or something. Yeah, I don't want to bring glasses, but I went in and checked in the knives. If you don't hit them real hard together, they sound pretty good. Well, it is be kind to the janitor day. So if we had glass, we yeah, could have broken right. glass right. all over the room. Right. We don't want that. So if you want to join, if you want to join in, so they're here. Are they? Are you saying they're here? Are you saying they can get them? Are you saying they have gotten them? Pardon. So, if so, if you so we, we want to do this as quickly as possible because I I know our time is almost over, and so if if you would like it, then um, so what we're doing is we're joining in with the Elijah list and their call to ring bells across the face of the earth for peace. Ring bells for peace, for the peace of the nation and the land of Israel and the whole globe. So if you'll, you may say, I would feel foolish doing this. Sometimes you have to rise above feeling foolish. You, ju you just have to. I asked Faye for the biggest bell we had at our house, and she said this ceramic bell is the biggest bell that we have so um, in our home. So that's what I have brought. For the purpose of joining in with all those across the face of the earth, I'm not asking you to join in an agreement in the ringing of the peace bell of the United Nations. That won't be rung until Earth Day. But I am asking you to join in with those across the earth who are in agreement with the intention of this for the purpose of calling out to God to intervene, 
especially at this time period that there are nations, supposedly 70 of them, that are meeting right now for the purpose of coming up with a plan to divide the nation of Israel and passing that on to the United Nations later on this week. It's possible all these things are being done because our president-elect has made some rather strong statements about how he views Israel. That may be. No one can prove that is. No one can prove that's not. It is interesting timing. Has everybody had a chance to get to forks or knives if they wish? You're working on it. What I want you to do is with your heart, so I'm giving you one more opportunity while they finish this. As we ring our bells, we want to join and agree together for the sake of an undivided nation of Israel. We declare your glory, your freedom, and your unity by the Holy Spirit of God under Almighty God for each national leader and fellow citizen to come into alignment with Almighty God's purposes for Israel. We further declare an, uh, good news to be over every land as we honor the creator of our individual lands. May his peace prevail. This is our prayer and declaration together with one voice. The intention of that is the one ongoing voice around the globe today for these purposes. We are agreeing with the ringing of bells for peace the peace of Almighty God to be on and among all of the nations, to add our declarations as God's people seeking to be in agreement with Him and His purposes for the land of Israel. That is what I'm asking you for you to, with your heart, declare with me as we ring, our, as we ring the bells. So if you could go back to the beginning of this for me, please, and if you could do me a favor and stand, everyone. So having gone through that, given you 10, 15 minutes to think about it, to ponder it, what I'm asking is that with your heart, that we are making a declaration to God and we are seeking to be in agreement with those in the earth who are agreeing for God's peace and God's, in essence, boundaries to be the boundaries for the nation of Israel, what he has picked and not the manipulations of mankind or this gathering that's going on right now in France. I, I don't know what I hit, Jonathan, Timothy. Up on the screen, please. Next one. Can you make this declaration with me? Everybody who's able to and willing to. One, two, three. As we ring our bells, we want to join and agree together for the sake of an undivided nation of Israel. Next. We declare your glory, your freedom, and your unity by the Holy Spirit of God under Almighty God for each national leader and fellow citizen to come into alignment with Almighty God's purposes for Israel. We further declare good news to be over every land as we honor the Creator of our individual lands. May His peace prevail. This is our prayer and declaration together with one voice, we are agreeing with the ringing of bells for peace, the peace of Almighty God to be on and among all of the nations, to add our declarations as God's people seeking to be in agreement with Him and His purposes for the land of Israel. So Lord, I just ring this bell and I just say yes to these things, to these declarations, yes to the borders of Israel as You have decreed them, yes to the nation of Israel, 
fulfilling its role in the earth. And I say yes to the body of Christ fulfilling your intentions in the earth. Lord, I ask that you do that. I ask that you do that. And our nation, this week is such a significant week. There is such tumult and turmoil in our nation. So many things have been threatened. Lord, I believe for purposes known to you that you intervened in this election. So Lord, our eyes are on you to intervene in all of this tumult, all of this turmoil. Lord, protect those who have been elected. Protect them from the assassin, from those who would cause such disruption on the streets of Washington, D.C., the highways, the interstates. I ask, Lord, you to turn those intentions, those plans aside, that you would bring forth your purposes. We would not be a people who would rise up against you. So I commit this to you in the name of Jesus Christ. And if you can, everybody said, Amen. Amen. May the will of the Lord be done. So you might shake hands with somebody.